Hey everybody. Today we're talking about stem and leaf plots. A stem and leaf plot is a simple way to visualize a single variable distribution. And they're particularly well suited to small data sets because they're displays that preserve all of the information in that data set. There's no information lost when you go from the data to the visualization. The easiest way to explain them is just by having some examples. So let's jump right in. Here's a typical stem plot. Each digit to the right of that vertical bar is representing a data point. In particular, each one of those digits is the last significant digit of an observation in the data set. And then the values to the left of that upward bar are the higher place value digits. So for example, the first few values in this distribution are 27, 29, and 32. Notice the key at the top. The decimal point is one digit to the right of the slash. Decimals are never used in stem and leaf plots. Instead, we get that key to tell us the place value. So here, one digit to the right of the slash tells us that we have 27 rather than 2.7 or 0.27. Here's another example. Construct a stem and leaf plot for the following data set. So here, the leaves are going to be the tenths, and the stems are going to be the two digits to the left of the decimal point. So our first few entries are going to be 34 slash 3, 34 slash 9, and then going down to the next stem, 35 slash 1, where the decimal point is going to be at the slash. Here's the whole thing, 34 slash 3, and then 34 slash 9, and so on. Notice that every stem in between the first and the last is included, even if there are no corresponding leaves. So here I'm looking at the stem that starts with 3, 8. This allows us to see the shape of the data in an unbiased way. The 39.0 the and 39.1 are not right next to 37.5, for instance. There's a little space in between. So that's all well and good, but there are two possible difficulties that can come up when you're constructing a stem and leaf plot. First, the data could have too many significant figures, like in this example. Here, we don't want to use the last digit as our leaf. In that case, we need more than 400 stems. They'd have to be listed as 41505 all the way down to 41915. So that display would just be unwieldy. So the thing to do in a situation like this is just to do a little rounding first so that you'll get a reasonable number of stems. Here, rounding to the nearest hundred is sufficient. Here's the result. We have three digit stems and then the leaves are on the right. And as the key reminds us, the decimal point is three digits to the right of the slash. So we're leaving out two digits from our original data set on the far right due to rounding. The second potential problem that can arise when constructing a stem and leaf plot is that there are too many data points per stem, like this example. So the natural thing to do is to use the thousandths place for our leaves and the tenths and the hundredths for our stems. Unfortunately, if we do that, we only get three stems, two, one, two, two, and two, three. While technically accurate, this plot doesn't do the job that we want it to do. It doesn't let us see the shape of the distribution. So the thing to do in a situation like that is to split the stems. So take each one of those stems and write it twice and let the first one correspond to the final digits, the leaves of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the second half of the stem correspond to the digits 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, like so. So the stem 2, 1 has now been split into two pieces. The first one has 210 through 214, and the second one has 215 through 218. Um, and so this resolves the previous difficulty. Now, instead of only having three stems, we have six total, and we can get a better feel for the shape of the data. Sometimes that extra detail can be revealing. For example, here, once we've split the stems, the data looks pretty symmetric, while in the previous display, it looked like it was skewed to the right. 